Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be reviewing the 2012 BMW R1200RT. It's a pretty comfortable bike. It's pretty big, but for someone tall like me, I just found it pretty cramped on this in the seating position. <laughs> but it was it's not uh, it's very comfortable ride the ride. Let's check it out. Yeah, these bikes are, are beast. So it looks like when it turns on, old school LCD, tachometer, speedometer, no digital things except for the, on the LCD screen. And I'll show you, I don't know if you've ever turned it on or if you ever see these bikes. These bikes are massive. It's off. Right there, you click it and then you hold this. Yep, here, turn on. Got the heated grips, heated seats. Uh, turn signals on this bike are different. There's two, they're both separate, kind of like old school or like the Honda bikes. So you got the right and you got the left. There's the horn button or canceling of the turn signals. Here's the, let the screen go up. Pretty neat. Uh, I guess this is the radio controls, high beams. So there's daytime, what, cruise control. Cruise control is on, and set, resume. Hazards. Now let's try the radio. Like on, unless it doesn't have a radio. I don't know. There's a key here. Let's see. I have no idea how these bikes work. This bike is filthy. Filthy, filthy. I don't know. It's got a key. For the gas. There's a little little girl. She's gonna learn how to ride this bike bike. What where'd that come from? <laughs> There's the one there. Here's the other one. This is my new bike. Huh? My what? new bike. Do you like it? Uh, so, like I said, it's got heated grips, it's got a radio, but I don't know. Okay, so there. It's got a radio. Where's your other? And then I don't know how to, let me see, see? This is weird. I've never had a motorcycle with a radio. Uh, hmm. Let's see, all the buttons are down here. This is a bar, a, a rental, not a rental, they lent it to me until my bike gets its first service, which you can't say what my bike is because I don't know when I'm releasing this video. Yeah, so it's got a radio, which is really weird. 
turn it out. Yeah, it's super dirty. Uh, like I said, it's pretty comfortable, but for me, it's really small. Has a center stand. Um, if you've never seen how to open the side cases on an RT, I'll show you. You have to press to get the key thing in. This pops out. Pull up. Case opens up. Yeah, it's weird. Side cases, and then the same way to close it, push in, press that. Okay. And it's shaft drive, just like most BMWs. And little kids, little kids are shaft driven. What? I want to get on this. Why? I don't know. That's how you get on it. <laughs> You gotta put your one foot on it and then the other. It, it's big. I'm gonna pretend I'm diving it. Don't move the handlebar. It's too heavy. <laughs> yeah, it's got everything. Radio, heated seats, heated yeah. grips. Help me. Uh, it's pretty good. It blocks everything. So that that windscreen goes up so high. I'm like, my lord. Yeah. It's nothing like a. It's a sports tour, but I don't know. I was thrashing it around the turns, and it, it felt like it didn't want to handle it. Let me give you some of the specs on it. It's got a flat twin engine, two cylinders, obviously. Uh, it's 110 horsepower. Um, 89 foot pounds of torque. It's air cooled. Uh, what else? A bunch of other size. So starter, electric starter. 57 miles per gallon. It says. Uh, it's fuel injected. No quick shifter on it because it's 2012. Before all the quick shifters are available. <laughs> Overdrive. Yeah, its fuel capacity is 6.6 .6 gallons. Uh, reserve is one gallon. Uh, it's payload capacity of 520 pounds. It's wet weight is 570 and it's dry weight, which is 514, which I don't know who rides a motorcycle without oil or any of the liquids in it or gas. When it first came out, I had a three year, 36,000 miles, kind of like every other BMW right now. Uh, it's a sport tour. And like I said, I was like, um, flipping them back and forth in the turns. And I don't know, for some of the sport touring, maybe it's because it's old. It wasn't really handling it that well. And I wasn't even thrashing it through the turns as much as I wanted to. But I mean, it's pretty comfortable. I see why people take these bikes for really long rides. Uh, but it's just, for me, I found, I barely had any leg space or leg room in it when I was riding. <laughs> I was like, I can't wait to get my adventure bike back from its first service. So, I mean, not for me. I'm not that old yet. <laughs> but let's take it out and I'll take some, I'll show you some video of me riding it around and I'll tell you what it feels like. So here I'm getting my stuff on. So I go take it out for a ride. I'll see you on the road. I thought sport touring bikes had a little bit more power because they're supposedly uh, supposed to be a sport bike. I just, I find the takeoff power a lot less than my GS, but it's probably because this bike is um, 10 years older than my GS, so I'll, be, I'll put it at that for now. Now we'll hit some of the twistier roads coming up and see how it handles, if it handles like a sport bike or if it handles like a tank. So we'll see when it's coming up to a nice turn. Uh, hopefully it handles good, but it is a 2012, so I don't know how good the shocks are, but it's turning pretty good. I just it's just uncomfortable, especially with me with my long legs. Um, it's very hard to lean the bike over when you're feeling uncomfortable. I feel like I'm sitting on the ground, like if, it, if I was sitting on a Harley. It's very low to the ground for, to me. It actually handles pretty well um, going into the turns and it handles like a sport bike in a way. Um, it's just a little bit heavier um, in the back. Like I think the saddlebags hold it back a little bit. Brakes are pretty good on it when you're slowing down 
pretty quick. I needed to get gas, so I had to slop really fast. And the turning radius isn't so bad. It actually turned pretty good, and the uh, center of gravity is very low, and then the weight is down low. So it's almost like a GS, but, I mean, it is made for comfort. Now we'll take it on the interstate, see how it handles at high speeds, on, especially on the Interstate 78 Death Trap Highway. <laughs> if you watch some of my other videos, I always call it that. But yeah, I'm putting the windscreen up all the way, and it looks so weird. It's such an ugly looking <laughs> bike with the windscreen all the way up, but hey, it blocks the wind, it's doing its job, and it's doing pretty good at it. I'm blocking most of the wind on me, so it's going around me and hitting me on the shoulders and not hitting my helmet any which way and my helmet isn't feeling turbulent it's uh, all clean air going around no dirty air coming in um and it handles really well like it, it's got some it's got pretty good speed on it for a 2012 um, you know it's not a brand new one the brand new ones look really awesome yeah and you can't go wrong with an electronic windscreen i mean the gs is that's the one thing the gs doesn't have besides the adaptive cruise control which i heard that the 1300 gs that comes out in 2023 is going to have all that radar and the uh, adaptive cruise control but i mean you can't go wrong with the electronic windscreen just like i had on the 2018 triumph tiger uh the gs has a knob and that's that's not so bad but i mean it is good to have the electronic windscreen. You can put it up, and then when you're coming off the highway, put it down. But that's one of the good features about it. I just, those mirrors on this bike, oh my god, they're terrible. All I see is my, my knuckles. Like, I tried adjusting them, and the best I could do is see out the back of the motorcycle, like the bottom. I can't, I can't really see behind me if any other bikes were coming, or cars, or trucks, for that matter. So that's the only other thing I see wrong with this besides it being old, older and uglier. I don't know. I just don't like the look of it. The 2022 um, RT it looks way better than this. And here I'm about to drop it off at the dealership to get my beautiful GS back after its first service and dropping off the RT. So I mean like I said it handles pretty good for a 10 year old bike and it's in great shape. I mean it is uh, a loaner from a dealer so they probably take care of it very well so i mean if you're looking for a good uh sport tourer and you're into the looks this is not a bad bike but i just don't like the looks of it like i said the new one looks way better than this bike and that's a quick review of the bmw um rt 1200 the 2012 edition uh it looks pretty comfortable and i see the why older people like it because it's, it's comfortable but it wasn't comfortable for me i have really long legs i have 36 inch inseam uh, legs and i'm six foot tall so i found it very cramped i don't know if you can adjust the seat to go lower or what but for me it was a cramped bike i prefer an adventure bike because they're a lot taller and i have more space to move uh maybe the new rts are a lot better maybe i'll we'll try to see if i can get a test ride on one of those or borrow one of those but yeah, uh, it's cramped. Uh, the radio's funny. That windscreen goes so so freaking high. It looks weird. The bike just looks weird overall. It's <laughs> not my type of bike. I'm not into the sport tours, the RTs anyways. I'm, uh, the new ones look better, but I'll just stick with my adventure bikes. Hopefully you guys like this video. If you do, uh, please subscribe if you haven't done so so far and give me a like and hopefully I'll catch you in a future video. Thanks guys.